Hi everyone, this is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Topic of the day is the section 7.3, the sampling and testing of incoming production materials under materials management with a specific focus on sections from 7.30 to 7.32. Let us see what section 7.30 prescribes. At least one test to verify the identity of each batch of material should be conducted with the exception of the materials described below in 7.32. A supplier certificate of analysis can be used in place of performing other tests provided that the manufacturer has a system in place to evaluate the suppliers. See the beauty of this section. At least, that means one, even one test to verify the identity of batch is adequate for the uh, materials supplied by the suppliers. With an exception of the materials described below in 7.32 we'll discuss uh, when, uh, when when that slide comes a supplier certificate of analysis can be used in place of performing other tests that means you don't have to do all tests a valid supplier certificate of analysis is absolutely acceptable to take the material in but there is a condition very important condition provided that the manufacturer has a system in place to evaluate the supplier. Manufacturer means the API manufacturer. He should have a system to evaluate the supplier who supplies the materials to the manufacturer of API. So the manufacturer should ensure that the supplier is manufacturing the material with some conditions and controls over the product and it passes every time. So the system should say that you know the, the production is done in a proper way at that point a supplier certificate of analysis is adequate to release the material with only one identification test for that material let us see what section 7.31 says supplier approval should include an evaluation that provides adequate evidence example past quality history that the manufacturer can consistently provide material meeting specifications full analysis should be conducted on at least three batches before reducing in-house testing however a minimum a full analysis should be performed at appropriate intervals and compared with the certificates of analysis reliability of the certificates of analysis should be checked at regular intervals see how much information is there in this section the supplier approval should include a data evaluation on the past quality history of the product that is being supplied to the manufacturer the evaluation should be conducted using statistical techniques that gives a confidence that the product is always consistently uh, provided which meets the specifications all the time so in such conditions full analysis should be conducted on at least three batches so you can select three batches for full analysis as per the specifications then you can do a reduced testing in-house a reduced testing is few critical tests can be done and full analysis need not be done but there is a point here however as a minimum a full analysis should be performed at appropriate intervals that means you should do oh, once in six months or once in a year full analysis of the batches supplied by the supplier for full and anal full analysis and compared with the certificates of analysis for equivalence of the, uh, the results here another point is 
reliability of the certificates of analysis should be checked at regular intervals how do you check the reliability of the certificates of analysis what is the purpose of certificates of analysis it is to check how the material was analyzed at the suppliers end so you have to go and inspect their facility that their lab and see whether all glp practices are being practiced there and they are doing exactly as per the glp requirement and all data integrity information is maintained well so that gives a reliability that whatever generated certificates of analysis are true to its nature and they are all okay and this is the this is the important point you have to do and this also says you should check at regular intervals that means maybe once in a year or once in two years that depends on how the uh, the past history of the supplier is there for the product so this point should be noted down very carefully let us see what section 7.32 prescribes processing aids hazardous or highly toxic raw materials other special materials or materials transferred to another unit within the company's control do not need to be tested if the manufacturer's certificate of analysis is obtained showing that these raw materials conform to established specifications visual examination of containers labels and recording of batch numbers should help in establishing the identity of these materials the lack of on site testing for these materials should be justified and documented see how elaborate is this processing aids what are the processing aids like filter a filter bags or uh, filter pads that kind of things are called processing aids even the um, cartridge filters for through which the solvents are filtered are called processing aids hazardous or highly toxic raw materials other special materials for which the manufacturers api manufacturers do not have the facility to carry out the analysis of that kind of materials or materials transferred to another unit within the company's control that means it is the same company but a different unit do not need to be tested see do not need to be tested don't, you don't have to test it provided if the manufacturer's certificate of analysis is obtained so number one is you should get a valid certificate of analysis for the materials showing that these raw materials confirm to established specifications see further visual examination of containers labels and recording of batch numbers should help in establishing the identity of these materials see how nicely it is written visual examination that the containers are all sealed and the labels are there in a, without any problems they are tallying with the recording of the batch numbers in the delivery chalons these things will help establishing the identity of these materials also if the materials are transferred from one unit to the other unit of the same company you can also establish that we have your own transport and the materials are loaded at the original in the original manufacturer's site sealed and the same container comes across taking care of all the storage and transport conditions and when it is when it when it goes to the other unit where it will be taken into stock checking all these things if everything is intact then you don't have to do any testing here so this is the point in uh, establishing how you can establish that there is no problem for the materials that are transferred from one unit to the other unit there is another important point here the lack of on site testing that means at the receiving end for these materials should be justified and documented how do you do this 
lack of on site testing that means you don't want to test in the receiving end how do you do this this is justified by 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 conducting an audit of the originating unit and confirm that the unit is following exactly all gmp procedures as per ICH Q7, and they give a GMP certificate, uh, uh, then a certificate of analysis, and all those records relevant to the GMP are provided, and all these things are documented fully. So, if you can really look into these 7.3, 7.30, 7.31, and 7.32 in sequence, and make a system in a in a very elaborate and nice way. I am sure you will be able to really get a lot of advantage in, this, in these three sections of material management. I hope you understood the content and the intent of these three sections and I wish that you revise your uh, systems to see that these three points are covered in your all your procedures and policies. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.